is not always easy to recognize, but there are some ways to identify some signs that you may be experiencing too much pressure. Sometimes stress can come from an obvious source, but sometimes even small daily stresses from work, school, family and friends can take a toll on your mind and body. If you think stress might be affecting you, there are few things you can watch out for. Psychological signs such as difficulty in concentrating, worrying, anxiety and trouble remembering when you have some kind of a memory loss. Emotional signs such as being angry, irritated, moody or frustrated. Physical signs such as high blood pressure, changes in weight, frequent colds or infections and changes in the menstrual cycle and libido. Behavioral signs such as poor self-care, not having time for the things you enjoy or relying on drugs and alcohol to cope. Next please. Now, it's very important that we also understand the causes of stress. There are many different things in life that can cause stress. Some of the main sources of stress include work, finances, relationships, parenting and day-to-day -day inconveniences. Stress can trigger the body's response to a perceived threat or danger known as the flight or fear concept. During this reaction, certain hormones like adrenaline and cortisol are released. These speed the heart rate, slow the digestion, shunt the blood flow and major muscle growth and changes. Various other autonomic nervous functions giving the body a burst of energy and strength. You see, stress is not always negative. It can be positive at times too. It gives us that rush to work and finish the work in deadline. Stress can also lead to some unhealthy habits that have a negative impact on your health. For example, many people cope with stress by eating too much or by smoking. The unhealthy habits damage the body and create bigger problems in the long term. So we say we talk about stress, but is stress similar for all of us? No, there are different types of stress and like I was just mentioning, not all types of stress are harmful or even negative. Some of the different types of stress that you might experience include acute stress. Acute stress is a very short term type of a stress that can either be positive or more distressing. This is the type of stress we often encounter in day to day life. Chronic stress. Chronic stress is stress that seems never ending and inescapable like the stress of a bad marriage or an extremely taxing job or a chronic stress can also stem from the traumatic experiences and childhood trauma. Episodic acute stress is acute stress that seems to run rampant and be a way of life creating a life of ongoing distress. Eustress, I'm sure not many people would have heard about this, is fun and exciting. It's known as a positive type of stress that can keep you energized. It's associated with surges of adrenaline such as when you are skiing or racing to meet a deadline. Next please. So how chronic stress can affect your health we know. The symptom may be a headache outside but inside you might be having other problems like heart disease, hair loss, weight gain or sexual dysfunction. So next please. The impact of stress. The connection between your mind and body is apparent when you examine an impact stress has on your life. Feeling stressed out over a relationship, money or your living situation can create physical health issues. Please understand how stress is coming to our physique. The inverse is also true. Health problems, whether you are dealing with high blood pressure or you have diabetes, 
will also affect the stress level and your mental health. When your brain experiences high degrees of stress, your body reacts accordingly. Serious acute stress like being involved in a natural disaster, we all went through our farm and COVID, or getting into a verbal altercation can trigger heart attacks, erythismites, and even sudden death. However, this happens mostly in individuals who already have heart diseases. Stress can take an emotional toll. While some stresses may produce feelings of mild anxiety, frustration, prolonged stress can also lead to burnout, anxiety disorders, and depression. So these are the ways stress affects the body, the mind, the emotion, and the behavior. So we can move to the next slide. So the stress-influenced conditions like diabetes, hair loss, heart disease, hypothyroidism, obesity, sexual dysfunction, tooth and gum disease, ulcers. So please next. Stress is not a distinct medical diagnosis and there is no single specific treatment for it. Treatment for stress focuses on changing the situation, developing stress coping skills, implementing relaxation techniques and treating symptoms of conditions that may have been caused by chronic stress. Some interventions that may be helpful include therapy, medication and complementary and alternative medicine. I think we must have read hundreds of articles on how to relieve stress. But uh, you know, what is the problem with us? That we usually expect somebody else to come and help us, somebody else to come and solve our problems, somebody else to tell us what to do. So sometimes we say, my husband did nothing to help me. Or you know, like my parents don't do anything to help me. Uh, the girls behind, are you listening? Yeah. So it's always like we expect the other person to come forward and help us. But today I want all of you to ask yourselves that what have you done to help yourself? Why not take that first step? So next slide please. So psychotherapy, some forms of therapy that may be particularly helpful in addressing symptoms of stress including cognitive behavior therapy, mindfulness-based stress reduction. CBT focuses on helping people identify and change negative thinking patterns. I repeat, change negative thinking patterns, while MPSR utilizes meditation and mindfulness to help reduce stress levels. I don't know if you all have heard Sister Shivani in Brahm Kumari's and other such self-help videos, but I think now meditation is not an option, it's a necessity. We all need to practice meditation. So next please. <coughs> Medications may sometimes be prescribed to address some specific symptoms that are related to stress. Such medications may include sleeping aids, antacids, antidepressants, and anti-anxiety medications. <coughs> complementary and alternative medicine. Some complementary approaches that may also be helpful for reducing stress include acupuncture, aromatherapy, massage, yoga, and meditation. <coughs> Coping. Although stress is inevitable, we can be manageable. It can be manageable when you understand the toll it takes on you and the steps of to combat stress. You can take charge of your health and reduce the impact stress has on our lives. So health, stress, Coping. We are caught in this vicious cycle and you know when to break it. Next please. Coming to the last section, we've spoken about stress, causes, types, effects, signs, symptoms. Now how do we manage it? So stress management, firstly 
Learn to recognize the signs of a burnout. High levels of stress may place you at a high risk of a burnout. Burnout can leave you feeling exhausted and apathetic about your job. When you start to feel symptoms of emotional exhaustion, it's a sign that you need to find a way to get a handle on your stress. Try to get regular exercise, physical activities has a big impact on our health, our brain and our body. Whether you enjoy Tai Chai or may want to begin jogging, exercises reduce stress and improves many symptoms associated with mental illnesses. Take care of yourself, incorporating regular self-care activities into your daily life, which is self-discipline, is essential to stress management. Learn how to take care of your mind, your body, your spirit and discover how to equip yourself to live your best life. Practice mindfulness in your life. Mindfulness isn't just something you practice for 10 minutes each day. It is also to be a way of life. Please note way of life. It's very important to discover how to live more mindfully throughout your day so you can become more awake, conscious throughout your life. We always write people on Facebook when somebody passes away. We write, rest in peace. Today, why not live in peace? It's up to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Sapru.